And at that um, conference, I made connections and network and grew a leadership network and we are still very much all in touch today. So I encourage you to see who else is on this call and to connect with them, follow up with them after the program. They will be the people who can help you work through difficulties, come up with new ideas, just a great group of resources and many of them will become friends. Um, in addition to that, I would, again, I appreciate you all coming, but I would also say, and Liette has posted this into the chat, um, I'm also chair of the nominations committee this year, and we will be looking for volunteers who are willing to run for STC level office. Those positions will include vice president, which is a vice president, president, immediate past president track. I'm on the ending the second year of that track. Um, treasurer, um, Jim Bousquet will be finished with that role. And two director positions, potentially actually three director positions potentially. So I do encourage you if you're interested in further leadership within STC, and this was kind of my kickoff towards that as well, that you contact one of us on the nominations committee, either me, Kelly Schrank, Liat Rutenberg, um, Liz Herman, or Christina Mayer. And I, Bethany, I'll turn it back. Actually, Craig, I'll turn it over to you. And again, thank you all for coming. I'm looking forward to this first virtual leadership program. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Leadership Day. I know that we're going to have uh, several events um, in the coming months. So this is our kickoff event. So thanks, everyone, for coming. Looks like we're almost up to 90 people. That's really unbelievable. I, Like Bethany said, I don't know if we had that many people in a room before, but it's really great that STC has such a strong and thriving, you know, virtual community as well. Um, the summit last uh, uh, in the last week was really great to attend, and it was good to be able to chat with people and stay connected. And um, it's really great to see so many leaders show up for this, and almost um, and also uh, so many potential leaders. Uh, that's always been one of my uh, great fond memories of of coming to leadership days. You get to see people that have been in leadership positions for a long time, people that are current leaders, and you get to see so many new people that are encouraged uh, by the opportunities um, in SDC. So um, as I always say, don't wait for the opportunities to come to you. Um, you know, sometimes just go out and uh, seek out those opportunities. We have lots of great committees uh, that you can serve on. Ben said also you can nominate yourself for a society office um, or perhaps for the nominating committee. So there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of ways to get involved and to volunteer and to help keep STC connected um, and uh, you know, thriving throughout the next year. Thanks again, everyone, for coming. So I figured we start by going over today's agenda. Uh, we've already started our wonderful welcome from our STC presidents. Not that you're both co-presidents right now, but we're in this wonderful transition period, right? After this, we're going to talk about the Community Achievement Award winners and how we're doing recognitions this year and the Distinguished Community Service Award winners as well. Following that, we have our Paysetter Award winners. This will also include presentations from these communities on how they've implemented these new pace setting initiatives and how you too can use that for your community and, and your programs. Following that, we are gonna have a 10 minute break so we can get up and stretch their legs. But we also, during that time, we're gonna be sharing our CAA recognitions video. If you do end up stepping away to actually take a break, you can always see that video later. Following that, we have a few slides with some of our community announcements, including chapter accomplishments from the past year, some of the plans for the future from the Community Affairs Committee, and our upcoming leadership program events, which were mentioned for the expanded leadership program this summer. At the end of the program, we're going to have our community leadership facilitated discussions, uh, and I'll get to how you can sign up for those in a little bit. That's going to be a little different. Following all this, we're going to encourage you to continue the conversation on Slack. We do have an STC community Slack. Uh, and I'll make sure the link gets shared in the chat. So you are welcome to join that since I know we just have two hours today, but the conversation shouldn't end there. And like Ben said, these are people you should get to know and see where this takes you down the road. So I believe John just put that in the chat for everyone who's not currently in the SEC community Slack. So for those uh, virtual breakout sessions, uh, I'm going to say that it's going to be a little different for those who haven't used Zoom's breakout rooms. We're going to give you the opportunity to pick which breakout room you want to be part of based on the topic that you feel is of greatest interest to you. And we have some wonderful volunteers who are going to facilitate those discussions. So please use the link in the chat 
to uh, pick the session you want to join. We thought about letting everyone sign up ahead, but we realized you need to tell us what your name is in Zoom right now, because I know we have some creative naming options for some folks. So based on that, we'll make sure you get assigned to the correct breakout room at the end of the program. If you're on the phone or you don't pick a session, uh, you'll stay in the main room where we're going to have our main topic, uh, Evolving to Thrive in 2020, which is something I know we can all have a lot of different perspectives on and things that we can anticipate going into the rest of the year. So without further ado, I'm proud to show our Community Achievement Award winners. Congratulations to all the communities who have earned this award. For those who aren't aware, the Community Achievement Award recognizes a SIG professional or student chapter's outstanding accomplishments in achieving the society's goals. And based on the amount of points a chapter earns from their activities, they can earn bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. So please join me in the chat in recognizing these chapters for their hard work. Normally, we would have everyone up on stage to get to receive their certificate and pose for a picture, but it's a little different this year. So instead of having you up at the front of the room, we've done something, you know, that I think suits this, suits this new virtual world we live in. We gave all of the communities who have won an award this year the opportunity to share pictures, video, or any remarks that they want to share with the rest of the folks. So we put together this video. I want to say special thanks to Vicki Dill for making the video that much more awesome by giving me permission to use her music as the background track. And as I mentioned before, we're going to be sharing that video during the break, but it is already up on the CAC website, and I'll be happy to share the link to that as well. So I think that's a good opportunity for us all to get to take the chance to see, you know, what all the work was that went into making these awards and what it means to these communities. I also want to recognize the Distinguished Community Service Award winners, also known as the DCSA, for their hard work and commitment to STC's leadership. These awards recognize an individual's exemplary effort and energy and dedication to their communities. It's the highest level of recognition that a member can receive to their service to a community. Like the CAA winners, we've also put together a video recognizing these folks, and I encourage you to check that out on the CAC website, which I'll make sure to give, them a, give you a link to that as well. But for now, please join me in congratulating them in the chat. I'm glad to see so many of these folks here on the call. Thank you for being here, and thank you for all the hard work you do for our communities. And now I'm going to hand it over to Jackie Damro to recognize our Paysetter Award winners. Thank you, Bethany. Um, everyone who submitted a pay setter, um, you did an awesome job. And for, you know, we wanted to award everyone, but uh, we couldn't. Uh, so the award winners um, were Rochester chapter, which you will hear from all of these award winners. But to all of them, I hope that you uh, outgoing incoming chapter leaders will learn from their presentation and find a different way that you can maybe inside, insert into your communities uh, the practices. And, you know, we look forward to next year's uh, better, more improved pay setters uh, applications coming in. So Bethany, back to you. Thank you, Jackie. So up first, we have Ann Wiley, who's going to be telling us about submitting an annual achievement award application for the Rochester chapter. Thank you, Bethany. I'm not seeing on there. Good, perfect. The Rochester chapter's Pace Setter Award was based on our Community Achievement Award application process which is uh, systematized now and really has to be. What I do every year for the Community Achievement Award is as soon as the application comes out, I determine which item, which items have to be done at what particular time during the year and rearrange those items according to the date when we have to start the work and when the date with the date when we have to finish the work. So we have some activities that go on all year long and those are listed first in my tracking sheet. And then there are activities that we typically do only in March for the Spectrum Conference and 
those just have a March date because they are completed at that time. And this process, particular part of the process would differ a little bit for every chapter and every SIG. I do not repeat the entire application. I just have a very brief note about what the item is and any details about the evidence that might be a little bit difficult to just guess from the uh, basic description of the item. Now this is, as I say, a customized process for each chapter or SIG and it is one which I like to start very early in the year so that the Rochester chapter doesn't get off track and not accomplish a particular activity. Unfortunately, the new application is not available yet that I know of, although I would ask anyone to correct me if I have missed it and to please send me the link so I can get started on this process. This it isn't really anything, there isn't really anything to say in a presentation because this is an activity. If your chapter or SIG wants to apply for a Community Achievement Award, you will have, and Bethany will help with this, you will have the uh, the link to the blank worksheet that the Rochester chapter is using. And furthermore, if you have difficulty with implementing the process, I certainly am more than happy to go back and forth with you by email or to meet with you over Zoom if you need any assistance. I don't believe you will for a minute, but should you have any questions or any uncertainty, I do hope that you will ask me to look in on your application and see if I can be of any help to you in getting started with calendarizing as it, as it were, what it is you need to do each year in order to win a community achievement award. I view this as a performance management system for the chapter. The only concern I have is that Rochester only lost, I think, four points this year and they were all in the area of membership growth because we in fact lost members in two of the categories. So I would hope the community, uh, uh, the CAC would rework the application a little bit and perhaps weight those membership items a little more heavily so that chapters and SIGs really can't win uh, a platinum in community of the year unless they have shown an increase in membership, unless someone has some insight to share later on about having moved away from the dues model for uh, membership a dues model for funding the society, in which case I, that my, uh, my comment would not apply. All right, thank you, Anne. And uh, Jackie did share in the chat that they're currently adjusting the CAA criteria for this year to respond to our current uh, pandemic crisis to make sure that's going to be something that will work well for the communities. So thank you, Jackie, for sharing that as well. And thank you, Anne. And it certainly is difficult to foresee what the rest of the year might might bring in the way of being able to gather together. I certainly hope along with you, Bethany, that everyone stays well and please reach out to me anytime. Absolutely. All right. And up next, we have Dan Voss from the Florida chapter for com sharing compiling an online chapter history. Hi, I'm Dan Voss. I'm here, well, virtually, to tell you about the STC Florida Chapters 2020 Pace Setter Award. Next. The champion for this initiative was chapter historian and STC fellow Mike Murray. Here he is pouring over documents to reconstruct the four decade history of the STC Florida Chapter. Our online chapter history has four major elements. Next slide. Mike launched the initiative back in 2017. This slide shows us celebrating its completion at our December 2019 holiday social. It became evident in 2018 that for the history to be comprehensive all the way back to 1977 was no one person task. So I joined forces with my buddy last year to help bring the project to completion. That was still not enough. Before it was over, we had involved 15 other chapter members, including a number of former members. Next. Here are the four elements in our online chapter history, along with a link to the history on our chapter website. I was tempted to do an online tour today, but in the interest of time, I've condensed the tour into snapshots of the four elements. Next. The first element is a narrative introduction with a decade by decade summary of key events in our chapter's 44 year history. This was actually the last thing we did to complete the project since we obviously first had to compile the data for the 44 chapter years. Next. 
The second element, the chronological history by chapter year was by far the most challenging. We wanted to capture key accomplishments each year and the people who made them possible. Our newsletter archives back to 1994 were a great asset, but when it came to the 1970s and 1980s, we had far less to go on. More on that in a moment. First, let's take a quick look at the chronology. Next. Starts with a table of contents linked to the 44 chapter years in our history, which Bethany contributed to the project. Next. We'll take a quick look at the 2018-2019 chapter year to show you the type of data we captured in the template for each of these 44 years. We began with the officers on the administrative council. Next. Then we listed all the committee managers. Next. Then we listed community and individual awards at the society and the chapter level. Next. We then listed special projects, both by the community and by individual members. Finally, we captured notable contributions chapter members made at the society level. And as you can see, this was the year Bethany was elected to the STC board. Next. The third element in the chapter history is a topical index to 40 archive chapter documents that still bear relevance to current and future chapter operations. Karen Lane contributed that. Consulting these documents helps us avoid wasting precious volunteer hours reinventing wheels. The index includes a link to each document for easy access. Next. The fourth element in the chapter history is a compilation of newsletter columns entitled Looking Back, Looking Forward, along with links to the historical documents cited in the columns. Next. Here's a capsule summary of the process we use to compile our online chapter history. We offer this to other communities interested in capturing their legacy online. Our Experience tells us the history for the most recent years shouldn't be too hard to gather. For chapters whose history goes back 40 years or, or further, like ours, you'll probably need to access the society's paper archives, which Liz Poland and her staff graciously opened up to us. Next. These precious, closely guarded paper archives from the society's ancient past cannot leave society headquarters. The records are on fragile papyrus scrolls residing in a climate controlled crypt that can only be accessed on a strict need to know basis. Seriously, though, I was greatly impressed with the organization and detail of decades of data from SDC's communities and extremely grateful for the warm hospitality Liz and her staff extended me, which included this coffee mug, SDC conference coffee mug. It took me a full day, but when I left, I had reconstructed the chapter's early history. Next and last. Here are three takeaways from our project. The first two were our payoff as a community for the effort we put into compiling and posting a comprehensive online chapter history. However, I'd like to stress the third bullet. Our chapter went all out on this project, but we recognize it may be a discretionary activity for other communities in terms both of more urgent chapter priorities and the available volunteer hours. My point is you don't have to go to this level of depth, at least not at first. If nothing else, consider capturing data at the end of each chapter year starting now. That's a simple one to two hour task that becomes a major effort to retrieve the same information from many years ago. In closing, please don't hesitate to contact Mike or me if you believe your community can benefit from capturing your history online. All right, thank you, Dan. Up next, we have Catherine from the Southeastern Michigan chapter explaining how to develop a cross-organizational roadmap. Hi everyone, my name is Katherine Pavlovich and I'm the president of the Southeastern Michigan STC chapter and today I'll be talking about one of our 2019-2020 initiatives to help provide greater value to our chapter. Next slide. 
So in 2019, our chapter created a strategic roadmap to help guide our chapter in the upcoming years. Our Vice President, Lynette Price, saw a need for a broader chapter strategy and spearheaded this project to get us started towards a greater chapter goal. Rather than just planning for the year, this project was really intended to provide us an overarching approach to supporting our communities as we move towards the future. A strategic roadmap is a tool that's used to help develop an organizational strategy and fully execute it. It defines key outcomes or objectives that will be delivered over a particular time in order to achieve a certain vision. Similarly to quarterly, yearly, and five-year plans frequently established by companies, the goal of these strategic maps is to identify your primary goals for each milestone and plan for activities that will help you reach those milestones by the specified dates. Next slide, please. So how we did this. The first thing that we did was go about setting our goals. There were many factors that played into our need for a strategic roadmap. From these factors, we developed a set of primary goals to drive our strategy. Our top goals included broadening our outreach to other STC communities. We wanted to make our presence more well known by creating relationships and establishing future partnerships with other STC communities, both locally as well as regionally. We also wanted to develop deeper connections with chapter members as well as students and professionals in the industry. By creating this greater sense of community, we hope to increase engagement, increase member growth, and provide more member benefits. And finally, we also wanted to improve our chapter presence through partnerships with other communities. And these are groups like local universities and colleges, sister organizations, and businesses. So by accomplishing these things, we felt that we could have a better chance of connecting with current or incoming technical communication professionals, as well as helping those become accidental technical communicators. So to get started, to accomplish these goals, we started by broadening our chapter outreach by working with other local and regional STC communities to collaborate on programming and networking events. One of the things we did was we held a joint program with the Ohio STC chapter, which was a huge success. We also continued to invite other chapters to join us for webinars and our virtual meetups. We also made a list of all local universities and colleges that offer technical communication, writing, or English programs. We sent emails to faculty members to identify interest and establish partnerships. We followed up these emails by inviting those groups and organizations to our virtual networking events and virtual programs. Finally, we also established cross-functional relationships with the local International Society for Performance Improvement, ISPI for short, and the Association for Talent Development, ATD. And through these connections, we learned that they were offering programs related to technical communication and instructional design. So we held phone calls to work um, on creating these connections and to brainstorm future programs that we could promote together. Next slide, please. An organization strategy is always in constant motion. So as we continue with our own efforts, we plan to work on reaching out to local businesses to establish partnerships with them, continue fostering relationships with other related organizations, develop content like job aids to provide information to professionals or students who want to become better writers or technical communicators, and we'll also be working on a roadmap handbook for other STC chapters to use and guide their own strategic endeavors. Next slide, please. So there are many benefits to adopting a strategic roadmap, and the benefits our chapter has seen and felt um, so far include increased awareness of STC and the opportunity to actually promote it, a greater opportunity to promote chapter membership and the benefits of being a member of a local chapter. We have created greater exposure to our industry in general, and we have developed deeper connections with local chapter members as well as fellow STC members. In addition, we have created broader opportunities to work with universities, colleges, STC chapters, sister orgs, and businesses. All of these things work together to create a more successful and driven STC chapter. Next slide, please. So your community can develop a strategic roadmap of your own. To do this, we suggest sitting down with your council members to start establishing a vision for the chapter. And once you have established this overarching vision, create three lists. These lists would contain things that you want to accomplish in one year, three years, and five years. Write these ideas down and then present them in a deliverable of your choice. For example, our roadmap is documented in PowerPoint. In this deliverable, include all of your objectives, your approach to the strategy, and plan to execute your goals. We also suggest doing some of the things that we did with our own approach. And this would include things like reaching out to local universities with tech writing and communication programs, and then fostering relationships with instructors and students. Always share your virtual events with other STC chapters. 
Identify sister orgs like ISPI, ATD, or UXPA in your community that you can partner with on programs, networking events, and more. Introduce yourself and attend their events. Identify potential projects or opportunities for members to gain experience. Provide examples to showcase your chapter and network. Networking is so important. It helps you really establish those relationships so we cannot um, advocate for that enough. Next slide, please. So here's an example of one of the slides in our roadmap. It addresses our goals of reaching out to establish connections with universities, businesses, and chapters and organizations, as well as for some options for how to go about accomplishing them. And that's what we use to help guide some of our conversations over the course of the year. Next slide. So thank you very much for your time today. And if you do have any questions, please, please feel free to ask me, or you can send us an email at council at stc-sm.org. Thanks. All right, thank you, Catherine. And for our last pay setter, we have Sri from the Carolina chapter talking about creating a partnership with a vendor. Thank you, Bethany. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sri Patabi Raman, and uh, I am the president of the STC Carolina chapter. Uh, today, I'm going to be sharing about our chapter's collaboration initiative with Madcap Player Software. Next slide, please. Um, so what exactly did this collaboration entail? Uh, we struck a deal with Madcap where they were kind and generous uh, to offer 12 free software licenses to chapter members for a time period of one year. And uh, these license, licenses were uh, valued at roughly $21,600. Next slide, please. So I'm going to explain a little bit uh, more about how we went about uh, creating this initiative with Matt Kepler. We started by um, having a partnership with them through our existing connections. Uh, one of our chapter sponsors, the Duke uh, Technical Writing Certificate Program, uh, were approached by Madcap Software for, for a similar collaborative initiative um, with their students. Uh, Christina Mayer, who is an instructor at this program and also an admin council member of the Carolina chapter, suggested to the Madcap ambassador that they may be interested in working with our chapter to reach a wider audience. Our outreach and mentorship directors, uh, with help from Christina, made this initiative happen uh, by collaborating with the Madcap uh, ambassador. Next slide, please. Um, so let me tell you all about how we went about promoting this initiative to our chapter members. Since the licenses were valid for a year, we wanted to ensure that uh, we promoted this opportunity to our members throughout the year. We started off by running a kickoff event in the beginning of the year, where we invited a representative from Flair to give us a demo. Uh, they basically showed the members what, they, uh, what the benefits are and how Flair works. And uh, we also made it a point to integrate uh, this licensing program into our uh, spring and fall mentoring sessions. Our chapter also gets invited to um, give a talk about the STC in general at various tech comm programs in the area. And we use this platform uh, to promote uh, about having like free uh, software licenses for chapter members. Next slide, please. Um, so as a chapter, what we realized was uh, Madcap Flare uh, is a tool that is used or being considered for adoption in many of the software and industrial firms, especially in the Research Triangle Park and Charlotte area, and um, connected to the um, Carolina chapter. And our admin council members got together and it was unanimously decided that our mentorship program was the best place to utilize the free licenses. We let the mentors know about this opportunity and we promoted it heavily on social media too. Um, integrating this collaboration with our mentoring program gave students, new members and career changes an opportunity to demonstrate their skills and employability by creating uh, portfolio pieces using Flair. Um, so that's it from me. If you have any questions, you can um, get in touch with uh, me or anybody from our chapter at communications at stccarolina.org. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our PaySetter presenters. I love seeing the 
the diversity and uh, depth of, of different initiatives across our communities. We actually have some time now in the presentation for questions for our Paysetter presenters. I know we've had a lot of talk in the chat on a couple of different topics about the CAA and about the community Slack. Uh, Tim has just posted the link to the STC community Slack in the chat right now for those who are not a member. If you're looking to share some conversations with other communities about upcoming events and, and other things. Um, I have a question about sharing the chat log. Yes, I will make sure to sh save the chat log after this and, and share all of the wonderful links that people are including in other resources. So thank you all so much. Uh, for questions, if you have questions for our Paysetter Award winners about their initiatives, if you could please just put your question along with either their name or the chapter name so we know who your question is for. And we have, I think, uh, 10 minutes for, for Q&A. So feel free to ask your questions. Oh, yes, we also, the slides will be available from this. I did send them out ahead of time, but they are also uh, going to be on the CAC website along with the recording. So, sorry, the chat's going really fast, so I'm trying to make sure I catch it. Do we have any questions so far, specifically about the pace setters? Lots of congratulations, by the way, uh, for those who were presenting and didn't get to watch the chat on, on all the amazing work you're doing. Okay, well, I don't see any questions specifically about pace setters yet, but we do have a question. Uh, that I guess you all are welcome to share as innovative folks. Uh, do you have any tips on attracting students to your chapter? I know, uh, Shri, you shared a little bit about student mentoring, and I know uh, Dan has experience with that from the Florida chapter. The important thing is to establish a link at a nearby university with the technical communication program. You really need two things there. You need a student to champion the mentoring cause from the college side and if possible a faculty advisor of either a student STC chapter or perhaps alternatively a, a student government sponsored organization, which is what we do with the Florida chapter at UCF. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Uh, Shri, did you have anything to add from the student mentoring side with your chapter? Uh, what we realized was um, just showing up, uh, like Dan mentioned, just having that sort of uh, constant partnership with various programs in the area. And um, one, one of the things that we have done last year was uh, giving talks to students, um, just making them aware of existence of STC and how it can benefit them. And um, sort of, uh, you know, conveying the same thing to the uh, faculties too. Uh, so we had a follow-up question, Dan, uh, from Kelly. What do you mean by part of a student government organization? For those who aren't familiar. Uh, is John Clement on? He could address that. Oh, he, he is. We could put him on the spot. I don't think he was planning to present, but John, I think you've been called upon. Oh, sure thing. So would it be on leading, like leading student organization? Uh, what yes. is a student organization, I think is the question. Well, okay. no. Oh, and, oh Sorry. clarification, Kelly? I wanted to clarify, um, I'm a, currently a faculty advisor for Omicron Delta Kappa at the University of Akron in Ohio. And I've been thinking about um, trying to get a student group or chapter for STC on our campus. Um, Dan, you mentioned something about running it through student government. Is that something separate from, you know, a smaller STC chapter on campus? Yes, it's different from an STC student chapter, uh, but it's functionally pretty much the same thing. Uh, John is the incoming president for the future technical communication, sorry, <laughs> Future Tech, I can say it, Future <laughs> Tech Communicators Organization, or FTC. So we have an STC slash FTC partnership. Okay. And there are advantages to being affiliated with the student government because we can get funding, we can get access to free meeting space, we can tap into the university's public relations engine to promote events. Uh, 
really there's no particular reason we would see to go through the administrative process of setting up an STC student chapter. We do, however, require mentees in our program to become STC student members. John, do you have any comment from your side as FTC president? Yeah, I would just like to say that um, having the student club available, it really allows a lot of students to enter into, um, even if they're not interested in go heading into STC head first, they can still join Future Technical Communicators, attend our meeting, uh, even if on a whim, because again, having them posted throughout campus and having those resources to get the attention to students, um, it just gets a lot more attention that way. And so um, yeah, it's really helpful because we have FTC events on top of STC events, um, a lot of ways that students can engage. And it's kind of a stepping stone towards STC in that sense. Um, so it's been really useful to just talk to students and see what they can benefit in that way. Okay, so, thanks, John. Sorry for yes. putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, so Bethany, I've got a quick comment on that as well. Sure. Um, for, I'm at the Rochester Institute of Technology, so I am placed in the university, and that gives me a lot of opportunities to talk to students, to talk to students who are interested in technical communication. Um, one of the things that the Rochester chapter put in place several years ago was an agreement with a couple of departments in the at RIT, at Rochester Institute of Technology, where um, the Rochester chapter would underwrite 50% of the student membership and the department would underwrite the other 50%. And as part of that, the students would become, would become part of the mentoring program. So that was facilitated easily because I was there, I was embedded at RIT, but that's a different, that's a different way to try to approach a department because what you're providing in a sense is experiential learning, which is one of the big buzzwords now. And it gives a student an opportunity to get some networking connections and to also get a little potentially some actual work under their belt before they get down to the workplace. So I would encourage you to figure out who those contacts are in the universities and try to work something out. And I know that Rochester is not the only chapter that underwrites a portion of the student membership. Um, when we made that decision, it was not, we made, purposefully made the decision not to underwrite 100% of the student membership for students in the mentoring program, even though legally we were allowed to do that. We just thought it was important that either the student or the department had some skin in the game as well. So that's kind of the approach that Rochester took for that's several exactly, years. That's exactly what Florida does, partial reimbursement. Okay. Yeah, because I was, I'm actually a faculty member at the university and I was trying to find the best way to do this because we do have like a hub of over 300 organizations for students to choose from. Um, or we do have what you were talking about. We have an experiential learning center um, that might, you know, be something for us to explore as well as a, you know, a way to have more of a presence on campus and get students um, to join something like the future, future technical communicators. So thank you for your um, responses. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for your question, Kelly. It sounds like there might be some good follow-up on how to help you execute on your vision. Absolutely, thanks. No problem. And I'll say as someone who started as a student, there's nothing uh, that can quite replace the fact of having a professor basically collar you and say, hey kid, I think you got potential. I've got this great organization called STC. Why don't you come to a meeting? And then they tell you the date and time that you will show up. Um, that is how I first started at STC. <laughs> Very true. Extra credit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We've got just a few minutes left. Were there any other questions for our presenters? If you asked one and I missed it, if you could put it back in the chat, or I'll, you're also welcome to unmute and ask on the phone. Because I know we had a lot of great topics to cover. Lots of folks who started as students. Okay. Ah, we have a question uh, for Dan. All right. Well, I guess we have a general question. Are there old chapter newsletters in the STC HQ archive? So maybe it's a general question of what is in the archive? <laughs> well, I don't think there's newsletters there. At least there weren't in the uh, folders I picked up for the 
the ancient Orlando chapter, uh, newsletter archives, I assume, would typically be kept at the chapter level. But before the age of the computer, they just kind of vanish. <laughs> we couldn't find any from the very early years. Uh, I see a very emphatic yes in all caps from Liz Poland. So I think that's a that's a solid answer on there being some newsletters available there. Well, that's great, Liz. Hi. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I think that it's inconsistent. It depended on the chapter and whether they sent them to us at some point. But we don't throw anything away. <laughs> that's <laughs> great. Well, the, the file cabinets, right? <laughs> oh. I have a few chapters mentioned that used to share their newsletters with STC. Yeah, I think it's great to have a rich archive of, of our community's history, which I don't know what the oldest community is. I should know. More than 60 years? Would it be New York, where we were incorporated? I feel like someone's going to pop in and... and I, know, I, think it might, I think it might be Chicago, Bethany. It's Ann. Hey, Rochester Anne. is they're at uh, 62 now. I see. Mona says Toronto is 1959. So we have a lot of great longevity in our communities and there's a lot of things they've accomplished in the decade. So it's definitely worked to get it all cataloged, but it's very rewarding to see, you know, where we've all come from. Seattle is 61. 61. Yeah. All right. I think we had a question about whether or not you can reimburse students according to bylaws. I don't know. That that was about chap society just, bylaws. Just people. answered that in the chat. Oh wow! Okay, wow! Thanks. We have a great chat, you guys. <laughs> You're covering so much before I can even get to it. Well, I guess I'll give my last call for questions, and then if we don't have anything further, all right. Well, if you do have a question that comes up later for any of our presenters, I know they're all happy to help you implement. Uh, you know the amazing work they've done with your community. So. It's not like there's a statute of limitations that will expire. So I think without further ado, our next thing is our break. So uh, we're going to take a 10 minute break. And um, during that time, I'm actually going to be sharing the Community Achievement Award video. So if you happen to stay on, you're welcome to watch it. Uh, if not, you can find the link to it on the CAC website, or you can see it here in the chat if you want to watch it later. It's about 10 minutes long, so it pretty much covers the length of the break. So feel free to put yourself on mute if you're not already, or turn off your video if you're going to do anything you don't want us to see. And we will be back in 10 minutes for the next part of our program. Thank you all so much, and thank you to everyone who's keeping the chat exciting. Sorry we can't gather together to celebrate in person, but at least we can recognize each other's hard work from afar. I want to thank everyone who served on the CAA committee for their tireless efforts to recognize our communities. The sun goes down in tropic skies. One feels sad. I want to thank Vicki Dill for permission to use her music for this video, and I also want to thank Alex Garcia for his help putting this together. And congratulations to everyone who won a CAA award this year. Gonna leave this cold and lonely north behind and go where the sun goes down in tropic skies. Tropic skies, blue waters call me. I'm gonna dance.
go where the sun goes down in tropic skies. Tropic skies, blue waters calling. And I wanna dance on the fall trees. I'm gonna do just exactly as I please. Gonna heal this heart of mine in tropic skies. Hi, this is Alex Garcia, immediate past president of the Florida Chapter SDC. The Florida Chapter SDC would like to thank the CEA committee for the great honor of being awarded the 2020 Platinum Community Award. We, would, we could not have achieved this level without the tireless work of our chapter secretary and CEA committee chair, Crystal Cozzaresso. Her committee members included Nick Ducharme, Van Voss, Bethany Aguad, Emily Wells, Karen Lane, Alex Garcia, and W.C. Weeks. We would also like to thank the CAA for recognizing our chapter history initiative with a 2020 Pace Setter Award. This committee was co-chaired by SDC fellows Dan Voss and Mike Murray with many hours contributed by our administrative council. Once again, thank you to the CAA committee for both of these awards. We thank you for this award. It could not have been possible without the help of Kelly Graham, who worked tirelessly behind the scene, completing the CAA application. We also thank all our numerous volunteers who do this because they care, and we care about you. Thanks also to the CAA committee for presenting us with this Platinum Award. We are very proud, and we thank you. We are thrilled about our Platinum Community Achievement Award for 2019. We're going to tell you what our team did to support our community last year. We shared our good news through our social media channels. 
we initiated it and ran monthly webinars for our all-star professional tech comm speaker series and published a monthly president's message newsletter. We engaged students and ran a student membership raffle. We kept accurate financial records and used the money to support our activities. We had two big events to celebrate chapter awards and our chapter year kickoff and promoted chapter membership through events throughout the year. We joined the STC Alliance, helped get its new brand off the ground and promoted the competition. We maintain our website and published many blog posts. Thank you. Thank you. So this is Esther Ashen. I am the SEC North Texas Lone Star Chapter President. On behalf of my chapter members, I'm thrilled and honored to accept the 2020 Platinum Community Award. Uh, thanks to Lacey Corbin, our past president, for her leadership, Jennifer Pryor for being our CAA champion, and Celeste for her, all of her help. I am also thrilled to announce that we have been nominated as the most improved community. Yay yeah, us! and I'm the current president of the Rochester, New York chapter. I would like to thank Ann Wiley for putting together our CAA application this year. Ann's template for keeping up with the CAA application was the basis for our Paysetter Award, so please reach out if you'd like a copy. We would like to also invite all of you to Spectrum, our regional conference that is to take place September 19th to the 21st, 2020. We intend to make it virtual, so please consider attending. Thanks again for the recognition, and we're pleased to be in the company of so many award-winning communities. So I hope everyone got to enjoy the video. Uh, we're actually like a minute ahead of schedule, so you'll have to give me a moment to get set up for our next slides. And thank you to everyone who, uh, you know, shouted out to their members who volunteered and the communities who won in the chat. I put it in the chat that I actually got a little weepy when I was finishing putting this together last night because it just really blew me away, all the effort and creativity everyone did in the past year. Thank you, Trisha. It was a labor of love to put it together. And thanks to Alex for gathering all the materials for it. So if you give me one moment, I'll get back to our main slide. Oh yeah, please check out Vicky's music. Uh, I've been listening to it basically nonstop since I started working on this. I highly recommend it. All right, also given a minute or so for people who uh, have stepped away to rejoin us. Oh, thank you, Ben, for sharing the link to the Dill Pickers Facebook page. 
Uh, last week at the summit, there were a lot of activities that really stood out to me. Uh, but Vicky's live performance uh, with the Dill Pickers was just incredible. Uh, it's been so long since we've got to experience live music, and even if it was from a distance, it it was a wonderful experience. All right. Without further ado, I think we're going to get back to the presentation. Uh, hopefully everyone had a chance to complete the poll uh, for the breakout sessions later. I guess we'll, we'll give a last call if you haven't already. If not, you'll be joining me in the main room, which isn't so bad. So uh, our, one of our last parts of the program, uh, we just want to go over some community announcements. So in addition to all the award-winning activities you've heard about so far, it's been a busy year for our communities. Just in the past year, I wanted to highlight some of the chapters who have been hard at work taking on new identities to serve their, me their members. There have been so many other accomplishments from our chapters, and I would encourage you all to brag a bit uh, in the chat because I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to highlight all the work they've been doing. So what's your community's uh, proudest accomplishment for the past year? I'm having Marilyn ask if she can attend Lori's session. I will do my best, Marilyn. Oh, sorry, we have a question about uh, the poll. Uh, John, could you share the link to the poll in the chat again? Oh, man, you were already on it. So fast, thank you. <laughs> so a lot of the community names we might have mentioned before are already uh, either in transition or brand new going into the next chapter year. Oh, sorry, Jennifer, did I put this backwards? Oh, we also see that Julie saying in North Alabama they had our first online meeting. I think it's been a year for us all embracing the, the virtual platform. Yeah, that's backwards. We were the Houston chapter and now we're the South Central Texas chapter to incorporate Austin and San Antonio as well. Thank you. And thank you for correcting me. No problem. All right. Just kind of wanted to go over a few of the plans for the year from the Community Affairs Committee. I know a lot of things are in transition this year, uh, as we've already talked about pivoting. I feel like I had to at least include it once in here. One of the things I wanted to mention is that we are announcing the new Community of Practice and Community of Interest model for our special interest groups. Uh, we'll be implementing these new models for our SIGs to strengthen the role of our communities and improve the services we offer. We'll be sharing more information about these new models at an upcoming event, which I'll mention on the next slide. We feel that the development of STC lies with our communities and our members, and we need to nurture our communities and provide them the tools to succeed. We're also going to be hosting a SIG open house later in the summer to recruit new members, because I know we didn't have the chance to do it at the summit, so we're finding new ways to embrace our virtual uh, forums to, you know, increase membership and answer people's questions. We've already had some folks who are new to our STC community now who are looking to get involved. We're also going to be planning uh, some virtual coffee breaks and happy hours through Zoom and also through Slack for our community members to come together and share ideas, especially we've seen already in the chat, there's a lot of desire to connect with other chapters and learn what they're doing and how we can share our knowledge and improve what we're offering to our members. So uh, I mentioned early on that our leadership program has expanded. We have a few events we are very excited to share with you guys. It's not actually part of the leadership program, but I do want to make sure to mention that the annual business meeting is online on June 3rd from 5 to 6 p.m. Uh, we have the link in the chat to register for that. I highly encourage you to attend. It's a great way to learn what sort of motions are going before the board, see the new board get installed, and just hear what's going on at the society level. Uh, usually this happens at the summit, so this is the first chance that people who are not attending the summit can attend from the comfort of our homes. And it's really a uh, always been a fulfilling experience for me to go. So I encourage you to register. If you do use the link, please use the link on that page to register because otherwise you might be filling out a motion form, which will come to the board. We've gotten some very interesting motions that say register. No worries, but I just thought I'd mention it now just in case anyone falls into that pitfall. I mentioned that new community of practice and community of interest model. Uh, we're giving an overview of that on June 8th from 7 to 8 p.m. That will be on Zoom, and you can register for that now on the same page you registered for this event at the on the SEC website at the leadership program, and we'll have the link to the chat in the chat to that as well. Uh, Todd wants me to mention that you can't uh, just join the annual business meeting. You do need to pre-register. So if you'd like to attend, please, I would just register now. Just get it done, and then you'll be ready to attend. Uh, for the community practice model, 
Uh, that's just going to be an hour overview. We're happy to answer questions and expand more on what that means and what that process of moving to that new model will look like and how that's going to enhance what our SIGs are offering. And uh, last but not least on the events you can plan for now, we have our call like our leadership happy hour with Todd DeLuca. I think it's going to be a fun time. This is just a casual time to get together, bring your drink of choice uh, and you know, catch up with, with Todd and other community leaders to see what's going on in STC. I know in this strange time we live in, we're all looking for opportunities to connect and share. So I encourage you to join that. We don't have a registration for that. It's just going to be on June 9th at 7.30. You just click the link and you can join the Zoom call and we'll, we'll hang out and see what everybody's up to. We do have three webinars we're going to be sharing later in the summer. I don't have dates to share for those yet, but we will shortly. Uh, one of them, I think Dan Voss already plugged in the chat. That'll be him and John Clement uh, pre uh, presenting on building and sustaining your, your community by training new leaders, which is something that I know Dan has been passionate about for his entire career. So I know that promises to be a really good webinar. We also have Lori Meyer, who is going to share on membership recognitions. I, I'm really been uh, impressed with all the knowledge that Lori has already shared with me from that perspective. So I'm I think it would be a great opportunity for you to come and see what ideas you can harvest for your community. We also have Bobby Werner, who is going to be presenting on recruiting members through LinkedIn. This is a follow-up to the Paysetter Award for her chapter last year, where they walked through the, the ins and outs of how to uh, use LinkedIn Sales Navigator to find potential members and reach out to them and encourage them to join your community. So I think that's incredibly val valuable for communities who are looking to connect with people beyond those who are already in your chapter or who find you. Uh, Todd wants me to also mention that it's casual attire for his happy hour social and uh, it's open bar, meaning whatever you have in your own fridge. All right, so I'm going to hand it off to Alex to kind of explain how this next part of the program is working. All right, thank you, Bethany. So we're trying something new this year. We will be taking advantage of Zoom's breakout room functionality for community leadership facilitated discussions. Thank you all for filling out the poll for the sessions that you wanted to join earlier. So our volunteer facilitators will each lead the discussion in a separate Zoom breakout room Based on the, what you submitted in the poll before the break, you will be added to the discussion. If you did not choose one or you are joining us by phone, you will remain in the main room for Evolving to Thrive 2020. Your facilitator will guide the discussion on the topic, giving people a chance to share their experiences and recommendations. These sessions will not be recorded, and after 30 minutes, the breakout rooms will end, and we will come back to this room. Uh, we encourage you to keep the conversation going in the STC community Slack at the link in the chat. All right. It's taking a little longer. I'm assigning everyone right now. That way everyone will go at the same time. So uh, it's going to probably take me a minute or two. Uh, in the meantime, I encourage you all to, uh, to join that Slack and feel free to start conversations there. I guess, uh, Alex, maybe I can put you on the spot. You want to give a preview of, of what you might be sharing in your, your Zoom room? Uh, sure. I'll be sharing uh, tips on holding virtual meetings, uh, how to set up your, your accounts and what kind of uh, infrastructure you need to lead a virtual meeting just like this one. Okay. And I guess I'll just ask whoever our, our next uh, person is who's doing one of the sessions. Sorry, it, this is a little more cumbersome than I thought. I just want to make sure everybody gets in the right room. Uh, we do have a request for the link for the Slack. Thank you, John, for being my, my link person. Sorry, we have some folks whose names don't quite match, so it's taking me a moment. Want to make sure we get everyone in here? I'm also sorry, not monitoring the chat at the moment. Uh, Alex, would you, if there's anything in the chat to share, would you mind? Uh, sure. 
Hats are optional for happy hour, but encouraged. <laughs> Okay, currently we've got everyone assigned for the uh, Evolving to Thrive room. Uh, we'll have you in there in just a minute or two. We did consider letting this assign everyone randomly, but we thought it would be more fun to, you know, give you the chance to choose exactly the topic that's most meaningful for you and, and your current experience. And if I do anything wrong and you find yourself in the wrong room, uh, can you, I guess the best way to reach me since you'll be off in a Zoom room would be to email me at stcbethany at gmail.com. So we're almost there. Thanks, everybody. Actually, I have a better idea. Uh, since we have a few minutes, um, Alex, would are you able to share your screen and share the uh, Distinguished Community Service Award video? Uh, sure. Is that on the website somewhere? Or? Uh, it, yeah, it is on the CAC website, or I think John can grab you the link. That would work. Oh, sorry, John. I put you on the spot again. No, the breakout sessions will be here on Zoom. Uh, we're getting them set up and you will go through a portal and you will be transported there. It'll be automatic. Yeah, it's going to be a magical experience. Just thank you all for being patient while I get it set up. And Celeste, we're not sure if it goes both time and space. <laughs> Alex, is that like the old Star Trek teleporter? Exactly. E either that or sliders or Stargate. You know. Well, what if you get the coordinates wrong? Where do people end up? Well, that's why I have to really focus here and make sure I get everybody in the right place. <laughs> Yes, please make all the sci-fi references you desire. This is your this is your moment. The engine can't hold up much longer, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> okay, sorry, we're almost there, folks. Oh, okay, I found my I found the video, so. Uh, when you choose to share screen, make sure you click for uh, computer sound. should be in the bottom left. Can everybody see it? Hi, I'm Rachel Houghton. I'm an STC fellow and a volunteer who used to not be able to say no. This award for my contributions to the STC Arizona chapter for volunteering in the last six years. I'd like to thank Alan Vickers and the entire STC Arizona Admin Council for nominating me for this award. I would like to thank the Society for Technical Communication for the opportunities that volunteering has provided for me both personally and in my career.
Okay, thank you, Alex. No problem. And thank you all for being so patient uh, while we get everything sorted out. I think I've got it all set up. So if we do this right, uh, you should be assigned automatically to your breakout room. Uh, you will have 30 minutes in the breakout room, and then you will be returned to the main room uh, at that point. You should get a, a dramatic countdown. If for some reason you're not in the room you meant to be, you can return to the main room and uh, chastise me in chat, and I will try to sort it out. Because I think I got everybody, but it's a possibility I made a mistake. So, all right, uh, bear with me. It's happening. <laughs> Oh, wow, this is very dramatic. All right, folks who are still here, uh, if you did not get a little notice saying where you wanted to go, uh, please respond and, and let me know where you would like to be. If you want to be here, I'm happy you're here. Okay, Kelly Smith, you want to be in membership? Okay, uh, Karen, evolving. Uh, yeah, for everyone who's here, this is going to be the evolving to thrive in 2020. I know you didn't get sent anywhere. Sorry, I should have clarified. You get to remain here with me. So thank you for staying. <laughs> uh, okay, MK, you're here. Everyone who's here. Uh, Angel, you want to be in understanding leadership. This is our first time doing this. It's exciting. So I'm glad to, to see we're, we're getting there. You know, and I don't usually get to say job. things like, we're going to do it live. <laughs> All right, Kathleen, membership, please. Okay. Sorry, we're just catching the few people that uh, wanted to go to other sessions, and then we'll be ready to start. Okay, uh, if, I think I've got everyone assigned who chatted me. If I didn't, uh, chat me again. Otherwise, I'll assume you're all happy to be here. Not that you wouldn't be in any case, but. All right, I'm going to go ahead and send the link to the recording. So absolutely, Ken, and I'll look forward to chatting with you later. <laughs> 